All right, Matthew, here we go. We've got 9-3 multiplying binomials. Our question is, show that polynomial distribution works by substituting x equals 2 into this equation. So you're supposed to plug 2 in here, 2 in here, 2 here, 2 here, and then show that both sides are equal to each other. So in this section, we're going to see that when we multiply these two binomials, we're going to get this as an answer when we multiply the binomials. And those of you who took Math 1 last year, you have already done this, so this should be a little bit of a review for you. <clears throat> so when we are doing dis distribution with polynomials, our general rule is that every term from one polynomial is multiplied uh, with every term from the other polynomial. All right, so we're going to start off with an example here <clears throat> where we've got x plus 4 times x minus 5. So our rule, our general rule for distribution and polynomials is that every term, so there's two terms over here, has to be multiplied with every term over here. What, what I'm saying is x has to be multiplied with x, x has to be multiplied with negative 5, and then 4 has to be multiplied with x, and then 4 has to be multiplied with negative 5. So every term from this one has to be multiplied with every term from this other one over here. Okay, so notice this is the same problem here. So we're going to see here that we're going to get x squared minus x minus 20, and then as a... Uh, answer to this question up here, you're going to plug in 2 here, 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 and here, and then show, yeah, these are giving us the same answer, so all this stuff that he's telling me actually works. So the first thing that I'm going to do, now I've got three different methods to do the same thing. So these are just three different methods to show that I'm multiplying every term from one times the other one. So these are just ways that we can um, kind of order our work. So the first one the way that this one orders its work is by rewriting. It says okay, x is going to be multiplied by x and negative 5. So that's like saying x times x minus 5. And then the 4 is going to be multiplied by the x and the negative 5. So I'm going to put plus 4 times x minus 5. So all of this is doing is reordering what we already know we're supposed to do. We know that this x has to be multiplied by these two, and this 4 has to be multiplied by these two. So it's just rewriting the uh, multiplication, the expression, to show you know, us doing what we're supposed to do. So then I would go, okay, x times x is x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. 4 times x is positive 4x. Four, 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Okay, so on this one, I do notice that I have like terms right here. So those two middle terms are like terms. So I'm going to get x squared, negative 5x plus 4x is negative x, and then minus 20, which is exactly what I said the answer would be up here. And it is. So we're just going to prove that that works by plugging in 2 when you write your summary. All right, so that's the first method. Now, all of these methods are going to do the same thing. They're just going to do it in a slightly different way. They're just going to organize things slightly differently. So which method you use is up to you. There's a method I prefer, but that doesn't mean that you have to do it like that. FOIL method. A lot of people do like this one. This is probably my least favorite one. So this one 
just says first, outer, inner, last. First, what does that mean? It means that we're going to multiply x times x. Outer means x and negative 5. So x times x, that's x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. And then i stands for inner, so these are the inner two. So 4 times x is 4x. And then L stands for last, this one times this one over here. So this one is pretty much doing the exact same thing that this one did, except this one had the extra step of rewriting it, the X times X minus 5. So these arrows, that's what this is showing right here. And then the bottom arrows is what this one's showing over here. So again, on this method, we've got X squared minus X minus 20. Same exact answer, just a different way to order it. Um, a lot of people will do it like this one because it's quick, meaning that you don't have to do unnecessary writing. You just kind of get right to the answer, and that's fine. I'm not going to judge you if that's the way you want to do it. Go ahead and do it like that. Uh, this is probably my favorite method because, this last one, because it um, it can be changed to do uh, the problem when it's not just a binomial times a binomial. We're going to see in the notes that sometimes we do a binomial times a trinomial. And this method is the most, um, what's the word for it? It's the most, uh, I don't know. It, it can be used the most different ways. I don't know. I, I know there's a word for it. I'll think of it when I least expect it, and then I'll just blurt it out. So here we go. So in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like we're, we have some kind of quadrilateral here. And I'm going to put one of the binomials on this side. And then the other binomial I'm going to put on this side. So what we're going to pretend is that this is a square right there. and these are the length and the width of the square. So how do we find area? Length times width. So this is x times x. That's x squared for that area right there. This is why it's called the area model. Anyways. Okay, this square here would be 4. And then this part up here is x. So x times 4 is 4x. This one over here is 5. And what's the height? The height is this one over here, x. So this is negative 5x. And then this part here is negative 5, this part here is 4, so it's negative 5 times 4, that's negative 20. So 4x and negative 5x makes negative x. So my final answer on this one is going to be x squared. 4x minus 5x is negative x, and then negative 20. All three methods giving me the exact same answer. Like I said, I do prefer the area model. That's usually how I do it. This isn't a bad method because it actually shows how to factor some things uh, when we hit it later on. It's not a bad method because method, method it kind of shows how we would factor this going backwards. So it's not bad. FOIL method's okay. The only thing I don't like about FOIL method is it's made for multiplying binomials together. But what if you're not multiplying binomials? What if you're multiplying trinomials? then the method doesn't work as well. But like I said, I like the area model because it can be used in a lot of different situations. So I just want you to try out each of these next few problems using each one of these methods and see which one fits for you. You know, Which is the method that kind of speaks to you and makes the most sense? And I would encourage you just to use that method from here on out. So let's do multiplying by distributing. So we're going to do this one. So in this method, we would split this up into being x times x plus 6, and then 3 times x plus 6. This is a pretty good method. I mean, it just requires a little bit more writing, but this method probably has the least chance to confuse you. So if you don't mind writing a little bit more, this is probably the one that it would work best for you because it's the one that's least likely to confuse you. 
So x times x is x squared. x times 6 is 6x. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times 6 is 18. We see that we have like terms right here. So we get x squared. Remember, we're not multiplying these. We're adding these. So plus 9x plus 18. All right, FOIL method. So the nice thing about this method is uh, it requires you to write the least amount. So if you just want to really quickly get to your answer, this might be the method for you. All right, so this one, we're going to multiply x times x, get x squared, x times 8, 8x. And then we do down here, negative 2 times x and negative 2 times 8. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x, and negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. We still do have these like terms here, and we end up with x squared plus 6x minus 16. All right, and finally, the area model. So the area model we would set up a little grid here. I'm going to put x minus 4 over here, and I'm going to put x minus 2 over here. So in this box here, I do x times x, which is x squared, x times negative 4, which is negative 4x, negative 2 times x, which is negative 2x, and negative 2 times negative 4, which is positive 8. We have like terms right here, and a little peanut. So our answer is x squared. Combine these two like terms, we get negative 6x, and then plus 8. So three different methods, they're all doing the same thing. They're all just ways to show that you're multiplying everything from this times everything in this one. All right, let's practice on a couple more. Now from here on out, <clears throat> I'm just going to use the area model. If you have picked another method that you really, 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 really like, well, that's fine, but I'm going to stick with the area model so I don't have to keep on switching between them. If you can't choose, just use the area model. So on this one, I'm going to set up the area model. I like how everything's ordered on this one, and the like terms are usually diagonal from each other, so that's one of the reasons why I like it. So 2x minus 3y, so I put one of the binomials over here. I put the other binomial up here, 7x plus 5, and now I'm going to multiply. 7x times 2x, we get 14x squared. A lot of people miss the square there. All right, we do 7x times negative 3y, we get negative 21xy. 2x times 5, <clears throat> we get 10x. 5 times negative 3y, we get negative 15y. All right, so this is to the second degree, and this is to the second degree. But this one has more x's, so it'll go first. So our answer is 14x squared. This one comes next, negative 21xy. So those are both second degree. So these are both first degree, and x comes before y. So we'll put plus 10x and then minus 15y. There are no like terms on that one, and that's fine. Sometimes there aren't. So that would be our answer. We'd get four terms right there. They're in descending order, second degree, second degree, first degree, first degree. So make sure you're putting them in descending order. Now this next one, this one doesn't work as well in the FOIL method. Okay, because the FOIL method says first, outer, inner, last. Well, this one's a trinomial. FOIL method is made for a binomial times a binomial. The thing I like about the area model method is all I have to do is make the box a little bit bigger to make it work. So I'm going to put a little bit bigger box here. Now I'm going to put the x plus 2 over here. And now I'm going to just make three boxes or three places on top for the trinomial. So x squared. 3x, and negative 4. So there's my trinomial up top. So now I've just got six boxes in there. So I've just changed the size of my boxes 
to fit the problem that I was given. Okay, so x times x squared in here, that's x to the third. x squared times 2 is 2x two squared. x times 3x is 3x squared. 3x times 2 is 6x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Now, do we have like terms? Yeah, we do. And there's a peanut right there where I have x squareds that are like terms. And we've got a second peanut over here where we have more like terms. So remember, descending order, x to the third comes first. Next, x to the second, and I combine these like terms. 2x to the second, 3x to the second, that's 5x to the second. This is supposed to be a 3. 5x to the second. I've got negative 4x and positive 6x. That's positive 2x. And then minus 8. And there we go. Last one. So when I had a binomial times a trinomial, I did a 2 by 3 box. Now since I have a trinomial times a trinomial, I'll do a 3 by 3 box. Still haven't thought of that word. What is that word? It means like it's really easy to change it and it can fit into a lot of different situations. There's a word for that. And for the life of me, I can't think of what it is. It's like on the tip of my tongue. I'll probably hit stop and then think of the word right away. Anyway, so I'm going to put x squared, 2x, and negative 1 over here. So x squared plus 2x minus 1. And then over here, I've got x squared minus 2x and then plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to fill in these nine boxes here. x squared and x squared. Remember, you add the exponents when you're multiplying. So x to the fourth. x squared times 2x is 2x to the third. x squared times negative 1, negative x squared. x squared times negative 2x is negative 2x to the third. Let's see diagonals. Uh, uh, negative 2x times positive 2x is negative 4x squared. Negative 2x times negative 1 is positive 2x. 1 times x squared is x squared. 1 times 2x is 2x. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. All right, now on this one, I'm still getting those peanuts with my like terms there. But here I've got a really weird shaped peanut. There you go. All of these are like terms because they're all x squareds. And then these two right here are like terms because they're x to the firsts. So our answer is x to the fourth, because we're putting in descending order. These x to the thirds cancel each other out. I've got positive 2x to the third and negative 2x to the third. Those are eliminating each other. Boom, boom. Next, I've got negative 1, negative 4, positive 1. So that's negative 4x squared because the x squared and the negative x squared cancel each other, and I'm left with negative 4x squared there. 2x plus 2x is 4x, and then minus 1. And there we go. All right, make sure to do this uh, summary where you just show that our method works by plugging in a 2 here, 2 here, 2 here, 2 here, Work it out, and you'll see that you get the same answer on both sides of the equation. So that's going to prove that what I've shown you today actually works. All right, that's all I got. Math hard. See you later. Bye-bye.